You may have seen proofs of the addition formula. I'll prove that sine A plus B equals sine A cos B plus cos A sine B using a proof I really love. It's not often uh, seen in courses on trigonometric identities, and it depends on considering areas. First, given a triangle such as there, oh, no, no, that's rubbish in there. First, given a triangle like so, what is its area? So we have a triangle with an angle theta and two edges adjacent to that angle, A and B. What's its area? Its area is one half of A times B times sine theta. Now, if you don't believe me, that's actually quite good because real mathematicians don't trust anyone. We actually have to see the proof. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of the A and the theta and taking that triangle, we'll drop a perpendicular and we'll calculate, using the normal formula for calculating the area of the triangle, the area is half base times height, where here I'm going to note height by h. Now it's easy to see that this is the case. All you have to do is just double up the triangles and you get a rectangle. And of course the area of the rectangle is h times b. And effectively because you've got uh, two pairs of triangles there, then it must be the half base times height for the area of the triangle. Okay, let's go back to the triangle with the A and the B and the theta on it. Let's consider now what H is equal to for this triangle. By definition of sine, we have that sine theta equals H over A, so that's opposite over hypotenuse. So in other words, H is going to be equal to A sine theta. Therefore, the area of the triangle really is half base times height, that's half BH, and that's equal to half B times A sine theta, which is h, and that's of course equal to what I said it would be, one half of ab sine theta. So the area really is a half ab sine theta. Now let's go back to the sine addition formula and prove that. So let's add together the angles a and b. I'll do two triangles together with a common edge e, and we don't actually care what e really is at this stage, uh, and let the other two edges next to a and b be, be little a and little b, like so. So you can draw the triangle however you like. Uh, the, the length of E doesn't really matter. OK, so let's take this triangle. Now the area of the big triangle is 1 half of AB sine A plus B, because we're taking theta to be A plus B here in the formula we've already proved. OK, so that's the area of the big triangle. But we notice the area is also made of the two smaller triangles. And so that one half of AB sine A plus B must be equal to the area of the triangle with the capital A in it, and that area must be one half of A times E sine A, and we need to add in uh, the area of the triangle with the capital B in it, so that's a half B times E sine capital B. Okay, so now we need to work out what E is. Well, with just a little bit of trigonometry, you can see that E is equal to B cosine B, just by using the standard definition of cosine. Similarly, E is equal to A cosine A. Okay, so we can fit that into the uh, formulae. And now, if you, if you notice, we've got half AB uh, in three different terms, and we can cancel them. So if we cancel them, we end up with sine A plus B equals cosine B sine A plus cosine A sine B, which is the formula that we wanted. Now, I can actually deduce the cosine formula, cosine A plus B equals cosine A cosine B, minus sine A sine B from the sine formula. We'll use the fact that cosine X equals sine X plus pi over 2. Now, you could actually see this is true by drawing graphs of sine and cosine, but uh, what we're actually going to do is use the sine addition formula just to show that we can, we can use it all the time. So, sine X plus pi over 2, so remember pi over 2 is 90 degrees, sine X plus pi over 2 is sine X cosine pi over 2 plus cosine x sine pi over 2. That's just the, the sine addition formula. Okay, so what's cosine pi over 2? It's 0. What's sine pi over 2? It's 1. So we end up with sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1, and that, of course, is just cosine x. So there we go. We've proved that cosine x is equal to sine x plus pi over 2. With that result accepted, let's prove the cosine addition formula. So we get cosine a plus b is equal to sine a plus b plus pi over 2. This is just coming from cosine x equals sine x plus pi over 2. Now what we're going to do is apply the sine addition formula, not to a plus b and uh, pi over 2, but 
a and b plus pi over 2. So we'll split the expression in that way. So let's apply the sine addition formula. We end up with sine a times cosine b plus pi over 2 plus cosine a times sine b plus pi over 2. OK, so we now want to get rid of that cosine b plus pi over 2. So let's turn that into a sine. So we get sine a times sine b plus pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Again, that's just using the cosine x equals sine x plus pi over 2. Uh, and now we have cosine a sine b plus pi over 2 at the end there. So we can turn that into that sine b plus pi over 2 straight into a cosine b using exactly the same cosine x equals sine x plus pi over 2. OK, then, so what we get is sine a times sine b plus pi plus cosine a cosine b. So we could actually work out what uh, sine b plus pi is. If we just look at the graph, you'll, you'll see it's just uh, minus sine b. But let's just use the uh, sine, sine addition formula yet again. Then we end up with sine a times sine b cosine pi plus cosine b sine pi plus cosine a cosine b. And we can work out cosine pi and sine pi, so we end up with a minus 1 and a 0 there. And in other words, we get minus sine a sine b plus cosine a cosine b, which just a slight rearrangement gives cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. Now, of course, I wouldn't actually expect you to do something like this to work out cosine a plus b. All I'm doing here is showing that you can actually work it out. Uh, in practice, what I do is I memorize the formula for cosine a plus b. But it really does demonstrate what I'm saying. A lot of maths can actually be deduced from earlier stuff.